Good morning uh, to all of you. Uh, welcome back to our second day of the um, FIVOX, DOS FIVOX InfoBit webinar, especially for the House of Representatives. With us this morning, again, uh, we would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Yusek Solidum. Um, and uh, again, um, Committee Secretary for Science and Technology, C. Sir Donald uh, Caballero. And of course, many of our participants yesterday, nandito na naman po sila, uh, mga representatives po natin from the various committees of the House of Representatives. Again, according sa pagkalad nyo sa chat box natin, Committee on Suffrage and Electoral Reforms, nandito na naman po sila. Maraming salamat. Housing, uh, Games and Amusement, Energy, and uh, Agrarian Reform, uh, Committee Affairs Department, Office of the Service Director, and uh, Disaster Resilience. Good to see you here this morning. Aquaculture and Fisheries Resources, mm, Bureau of Soils and Water Management, may representative din po tayo, and Human Rights Committee, Climate Change, Cooperatives Development, Welfare of Children. Good to. Uh, uh, see you here this morning and poverty alleviation. Sa mga darating pa po, uh, mamaya po i-acknowledge din po ulit natin sila. If yesterday we had Yusek Solidum as our guest speaker, this morning we prepared two very important talks for you. Very short talks but very relevant for um, what we need to do for disaster risk reduction. Uh, but before that, may we call on Yusek Solidum for a very short message. Welcome message please. Uh, magandang umaga po muli sa inyong lahat. Salamat po sa pagdalo dito sa FIVOX InfoBit uh, webinar. Uh, ngayong araw po nabanggit ni Dr. Villegas na ang ating tatalakayin ay yung uh, mga innovations na sinagawa ng DOST FIVOX kasama na rin ang iba't ibang mga ehensya para matulungan natin ang iba't ibang sektor ng lipunan, ang national government, Hanggang community, pati NGO, private sector. Ito po ay mga na-develop po nating mga software para magkaroon tayo ng tamang disaster imagination na napaka-importante upang uh, maisagawa natin ang tamang plano para sa pagpapababa ng mga mamamatay o epekto sa ating mga komunidad. Ma-imagine na natin yung pwedeng mangyari, hindi lamang yung mga hazards sa panganib na darating, ano mismo yung posibleng epekto. Kaya yung uh, uh, ipapakita po ngayong maga uh, ni Dr. Ginila Bautista ay yung Rapid Earthquake Damage Assessment System na sinimulan pa noong 2002 at ini-improve hanggang uh, uh, ngayon. Hindi lang pang lindol yan, pati na rin sa baha, malakas na hangin at tsunami. At pangalawa, si Ms. Mabilin Kaulugan ay ipapakita yung uh, tinatawag nating uh, platform for sharing information uh, na napaka-importante sa ating panahon uh, sa pagmamap out ng mga information sa ground. Uh, sana nga magamit ito ng maraming ehensya at hindi lang ng LGU. Pagre-report ng mga disasters kung sakaling nangyari. Uh, pagbibigay ng uh, analysis sa bawat local government and more importantly para sa lahat, sa inyo, sa bawat isa, pati yung mga nagtatrabaho sa Pilipinas o turista, pwedeng tingnan yung hazard hunter na sa isang, uh, sa pindot pa lamang, dalawang uh, uh, press ng inyong cellphone or computer, malalaman nyo na kagad ang mga panganib na pwedeng tumama sa isang lugar. Ito pong mga innovations, ay recognize ito ng ating mga partners sa buong mundo and uh, even uh, yung mga international uh, organizations have recognized the advanced uh, uh, systems that the USTV Vox has developed. So gusto namin uh, isi-share sa inyo po yan ngayong umaga at marami pong salamat sa inyong pagdalo. Ang, uh, kailangan lang po natin tingnan kung paano natin ito magagamit, hindi lang ng ating, uh, ating sarili, pamilya, but more importantly for your committees and for the congressional districts. Marami pong salamat muli sa Committee on Science and Technology no? na nakipagtulungan sa DOST uh, para maibigay sa inyo yung serye ng mga seminars from various Department of Science and Technology Agencies. Uh, thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, uh, Yusek Salidun, uh, for taking also the time to be with us this morning again. And uh, okay, let's proceed. I'm Maylene Martinez Villegas, your uh, kasama ngayong umaga hanggang mamayang tanghali. Okay, similar to yesterday, uh, we will be having um, short talks this morning. So we would like to remind all of you to please um, mute your microphone and turn off your video while uh, the talk is ongoing. Uh, and also as a reminder, uh, today is actually the uh, anniversary of the 2013 Bohol earthquake. It's a, a magnitude 7.2 earthquake. And uh, we would like to remind all of you uh, of the possible impacts of various earthquakes that could occur in the country. So kung meron po kayo na mga interest, uh, please always visit our FB and website because nandun po lahat ng information that you can get. Uh, regarding uh, mga current earthquakes as well as yung po mga uh, katulad nito po na mga parati namin na nilalabas, ang mga throwback earthquake info po natin. Okay. To begin, uh, this morning, we are very, very lucky to have two um, of yung mga geologists po natin from FIVOX. And I am proud to say na matagal ko na po sila mga naking kasama. Uh, si Yusek Solidum, Kung hindi niyo po, kahapon nakita niyo po uh, uh, nung in-introduce namin siya, halos kasabayan po niya yung next speaker natin. Uh, Magka-batch ba sila or at least magkasabayan sila. They both uh, graduated. Uh, Dr. Maria Leonila Bautista actually graduated from UP, uh, BS Geology, UP Diliman, and finished her master's degree in Earth and Planetary Sciences as well as her Doctor of Science degree in Earth and Planetary Sciences sa Kyoto University in Japan. Ang mas maganda pong mga kwento sa kanya is that uh, 1984, when she joined FIVO, syempre, uh, inabot nila yung Mayon eruption and Pinatubo eruption kasi po ako dumating after Pinatubo. And uh, I am very, very lucky to be able to have uh, worked and uh, naka, ang tawag dito, professionally grew with uh, them. Uh, sila po mga mas uh, senior geologists sa akin at that time. And one of, uh, one of the many accomplishments of uh, our next speaker is the fact that she uh, led many, many significant projects, collaborative projects uh, for the agency together with uh, our former deputy director, Bart Bautista. Uh, some of yung mga projects po natin, uh, I think familiar din kayo, will be yung GMMA Ready and uh, this analysis project as well as Ito pong kanyang uh, talk this morning about Rapid Earthquake Damage Assessment System software, which she developed together with uh, siya po yung half of the brain that made this thing. Uh, yung isa po ay si uh, uh, deputy, the former Deputy Director Bartolome Bautista. So silang dalawa po ang uh, uh, brains behind this very, very interesting uh, redas. So, uh, I think that's a, a way to introduce her. Ah, baka po makalimutan. Meron po silang award because of the uh, because of the Redos project. Uh, they were awarded. Uh, the team was awarded the twenty first Gawad Kalasag Special Recognition for Group Category for all the notable contributions to the national effort to build a safer climate change adaptive and disaster resilient Philippines worthy of emulation by our people and recognition. Recipient po sila ng special award sa Gayawad Kalasag noong 2019. So please welcome Dr. Maria Leonila Bautista, Associate Scientist, Department of Science and Technology. Uh, welcome, okay. Gayo. Yeah, good morning. Um, good morning po sa inyo. Excited akong makasama ang lahat ng participants. So this morning, I will be talking about uh, the Redis software. Uh, Mylene, ako ba ang unang presenter na? Yes. Ah, okay, sige. Thank you. So, I'll be sharing my screen, no? I will be entertaining questions at the end of my lecture. Okay? Sige, sandali lang po. Yeah. Okay, nakikita na ba? Okay. Okay, nakikita na, Miss Mylene? Yes, yes. Thank okay. You. So, good morning, everyone, again. Um, 
I'll just stop my video so para maka-focus tayo, no? <laughs> so, uh, this morning I'll be talking about the Reda software and its main per main capabilities, its ability to calculate impacts from various hazards, okay? So, the question is, have you heard of the big one? And have you ever wondered how the impacts were calculated? If you answered yes to at least one of them, then Redis is for you. And the third is, would you like to learn how to, to do the calculations yourselves, okay? So Redis is, stands for Rapid Earthquake Damage Assessment System. It's a do-it-yourself hazard and impact estimation software. Uh, it can do simulation for different hazards like ground shaking, liquefaction, landslides, and tsunami. Uh, it is a tool for preparing scenarios and computing risk and impacts. Uh, the static maps of other hazards like from MGB, Pagasa are also there in the software. And it includes a module for developing exposure database, like putting in data about houses, schools, bridges, areas, and it can be updated by local government. So this is the opening page of the Reda software. So it's non-commercial. We don't use, uh, uh, we don't buy, we don't need to buy any software to use this. It's already a package by itself. It is, it has been shared to Philippine community since 2006 and it's free. Okay, so to do the calculations, we, we put together three things to do the impact or the risk calculation. We simulate hazards in the software, we put in the exposure database, and we there is a built-in vulnerability equations in the software. So having these three things together, we are able to compute for the impacts. So the hazard is being simulated inside the software, okay, like this. And then the exposure database uh, is two, two, two pronged, like there, there is a built-in exposure database. And we also teach the LGUs to develop the exposure database themselves. And the third are the vulnerability equations, uh, like um, if it's intensity seven, how many percent will be damaged for a particular structures. So those kinds of equations are built in in the Reda software. So we are able to compute the physical damage as well as to infer the social uh, vulnerability. Okay, so so here is an example of what we can simulate using the Reda software. Like if we want to know uh, how strong or in terms of intensity, a magnitude 7.2 earthquake will incur uh, in Metro Manila, we can produce maps like this, which is color coded. We can see the epicenter and we can see that different intensity at the bottom, like in green will be intensity seven or eight in different places uh, like so. And then uh, in red as we have built in vulnerability and fragility equations, uh, meaning if like, if we look at this uh, colorful uh, graph in the, at the bottom, we can see that if it's like weak shaking, most of the time the damage is slight. And if it's going towards moderate to complete um, uh, damages, then it's a factor of the strong shaking. So habang lumalakas yung paggalaw or yung shaking ng earthquake, dumadami yung moderate, extensive, and complete. So these type of equations are in the Reda software, and which enables us to compute for the physical damage, economic loss, and the fatalities, okay? And the third is component that's in there is the exposure data. Exposure refers to the elements at risk, refers to both, there's a word both, the human population and the building stock. So, pag sinabi natin exposure, combination siya ng il, ano yung building, type of building, at ilan yung nakatira doon. And if we have that, then we have exposure database. So, we should have that before we can do the impact calculation. And, and a comprehensive exposure database contains information on the spatial location of people and structure, kung nasaan sila, no? Mga residential, business, emergency, and critical infrastructure. Construction information, including material type, wall and roof, number of stories and vintage, no? And the value, magkano ba yung building na yon, including the contents, no? So, paano natin gagawin? How do we count? the number of buildings, and the people who reside in these structures. 
So, there's a so-called so approach, the top-down approach, kung saan gumagamit tayo ng mga remote sensing data, land use mapping, census data, assessor's data. So, ipapakita ko yan kung paano gawin. Pero ang the better approach ay yung bottom-up approach, kung saan um, gagamit tayo ng mga survey ng ating mga LGUs. No? Yun yung bottom-up approach. So, ito po yung mga uh, approaches na yun. Uh, pinanggagalingan ng data natin, PSA, Philippine Statistics Authority. Uh, ang maganda dito sa PSA data, nationally consistent. Kung anong method nga ginawa sa Northern Philippines, yun ang method all throughout hanggang Southern Philippines. So, nationally consistent. Kaya lang, ang sinasurvey lang niya, yung mga residential buildings, hindi kasama yung mga ano natin, mga mga malls, for example, yung iba pang structures natin. And then, pag nag-survey siya, wall and roof lang. At titignan niya wall and roof, combination, hindi talaga actual building ang sinasurvey. And then, may isang method naman, yung land use mapping, together with the LGUs of Metro Manila, tinry namin itong approach na to. Nag-land use mapping kami, and then, kung ano yung land use classification ng isang lugar, yun ang type of ang typical building zone na infer namin. So, yun yung number two method. Yung number three method naman, using assessor's data. Kaya lang, ang assessor's data, they also have their own building classification. And then, ang, ang ano lang, yung mga taxable assets. Paano naman yung mga hindi, na, na, hindi nakakabayad ng tax? So, hindi ba natin sila isasama sa impact calculation? So, mga ganun, no? And of course, the best, yung mag-survey tayo. Yun yung ina-advocate namin sa pagtuturo sa mga LGU. So, yung number four. Okay? So, ito yung mga building types na dapat nasa database natin, nasa exposure database. So, by looking at the pictures, medyo nakakagulat, no? Pero by looking at the acronym, like sa left, W1, that stands for wood, no? W1, mga typical wood structures natin. Uh, W2, yung mga mas malalaking uh, size, area, floor area. W3, yung mga bahay kubo natin, ano? Yung N will be makeshift, yung mga natayo na lang sa tabi-tabi, no? Yung CHB, concrete hollow blocks. CWS, combination ng concrete and wood. Yung C stands for concrete, no? Uh, w is wood, so CWS, concrete and wood. Sa taas, wood sa baba, concreto. MWS, masonry sa baba, concrete, uh, wood sa taas. Uh, ito naman, mga ano, RM, RM, mga Meron tayong mga wood, may mga metal deck diagram, mga gano'n. URA, yung mga sa Batanes, no? yung mga bahay sa Batanes. URM, mga old churches. Yung C1, mga konkreto. No? PC1, precast. Yung tinayo sa iba yung uh, mga semento and then nilagay ko saan itatay yung building, precast ang tawag. And then S1, mga steel. So, bawat klase ng building na to, uh, meron tayong uh, fragility curves or vulnerability curves. Alam natin na pag ganitong shaking, ganito yung damage sa ganitong building na to. At yung mga equations na yun, naka-built in na sa Reda software. So kung magko-collect ng exposure database, dapat ganitong buildings type ang makolekta natin para ma-apply natin yung impact calculation. Okay? So ang nag-develop po nito ang UP Civil Engineering Department. Okay? So, paano natin gagawin? Eh, paano wala tayong ganung survey? So, ang ginawa po namin using the PSA data, diya may survey siyang ganyan, 1 to 9, titignan niya yung roof mo, and then titignan niya yung wall. Using combination nito, like kung galvanized iron and roof, ito yung wall mo, concrete brick stone. Pag kinombine mo yan, meron tayong tinatawag na lookup table. Pag 1-1, galvanized iron, concrete wall, 35% of the time, CHB yung building, and 6%, uh, 65% of the time C1. So, ganyan. So, using this different wall and roof combination, we were able to infer all the building types sa buong Pilipinas. Pati yung ilan ang nakatira. Okay? So, meron na tayong preliminary data which enables us to compute the impact should the particular earthquake happens. Okay? So, pero ang sinasabi ko, we advocate for collecting exposure database through actual building survey. So, using, using the Redis Exposure Data Mapper, using JMapper, wherein nakipag-team up kami sa JWIS project, na next speaker natin, uh, gumagamit tayo ng Android devices. Pwede na rin ng iOS ngayon, mga iPhone, uh, kasi meron siyang mga built-in GPS camera. Uh, and then we're able to collect information using our cell phone, using either foot survey or using street view sa office lang natin. Pwede natin gawin. We don't need to go out in the field, dahil, lalo na ngayong pandemic. No? And we're able to collect photographs. Okay. So using the Redis EDMJ mapper, instead of point data, 
yung previous nakita niyo point no ngayon polygon na po pwede natin i-collect yung polygon mga footprint ng building nag team up kami with Jerry's PH nagko-collect na tayo ng polygon geometry instead of points and then yung attributes na kinokolekta natin usable for multi hazard hindi lang pang earthquake pwede siya severe wind flood tsunami no pwede na siyang gamitin and then data merging is done by sending data to Fivox via the internet so isesend mo lang makukuha na namin sa server dito and then what the LG you can do is to pull back data using a web application and then available siya sa Android and also iOS no and then, pwede siya mong export a CSV Excel file or if you sa GIS, uh, quantum GIS, no? Pwede. And then, nakalink siya sa Fivox Hunter, uh, Hazard Hunter, no? So, let's see some results. So, let's say, gusto natin mag-collect ng impact. So, first, mag-simulate tayo ng hazard like this sa Redas. And then, kunin natin exposure database. And then, kunin natin yung mga equations. So, tignan natin, no? So, example, what if magkaroon ng magnitude 7.2 earthquake along the West Valley Fault, isimulate natin. So, makapag-produce tayo ng map like this. Ito, example ko po sa Mandalo, yung city. Uh, ito po, pwede natin i-plot yung economic loss per barangay. Yung color niya sa baba will tell you kung saan yung mas severe, yung darker color, kung saan mas severe yung economic loss, yung lighter color, yung mas kakaunti. No? So, we can plot. Uh, maps like this. So, meron ito sa kanan, ito yung star, ito yung epicenter and the location of the fault. No? And then, pwede rin natin i-define yung mga damage. So, D1 to D5. Siyempre, yung D1 yung slight damage lang, hairline cracks. And then, yung D5, yung complete collapse na. And then, in between yung D3. So, tignan natin yung mga pictures. So, ito yung D3 yung gitna. So, merong cracks and spalling in several columns like this, ganito yung picture. Yan. So, makikita natin. No? And then, we can plot yung D3. Pag ganun yung scenario. Like this. No? And then, color-coded din kung saan yung mas severe yung damage. Extensive physical damage. And then, yung D4 naman, ganito yung itsura. Ang local definition natin. Heavily su damage supports but the building remains standing. So, pwede ka pang lumabas pero hindi na halos magamit yung building. So, pag ganito, pwede rin natin i-plot yung sa map. No? Kung ano yung mangyayari sa Mandaluyong kung sakaling magkaroon ng magnitude 7.2 earthquake. No? And then, of course, D5, all columns and walls are flattened to the ground. The structure is collapsed. Ito yung mga uh, sample pictures like this. And we can also plot the map like this. Okay? So, using the Redis software. And then, pwede rin natin computing yung casualty levels. So, dito, dinivide natin to S1 to S4. Yung S1, slight injuries lang, mga gas-gas. S2, non-life-threatening, uh, malaki pa rin ang chance mo mag-survive. S3, life-threatening, pag hindi ka nadala sa hospital in 24 hours, maaring mamatay ka. So, ito medyo serious na S3. And of course, yung S4, fatalities, main shock pa lang, maaring may, mamatay ka na. No? So, yun, pwede natin i-count using the software. So, ito po, for Mandalo yung city, kung sakaling mangyaring yung uh, magnitude 7.2, ito po yung plot ng slight damage, ng life-threatening, and life-threatening, and the fatalities per barangay. Okay? So, pwede natin isimulate. And then, pwede rin natin itabulate per barangay. So, out of the 502 damages, ang highest will be addition hills, 103 fatalities. So, if we want to engage ang ating mga barangay leaders, sabihin natin, CAP, uh, in-expect po natin, 103 ang maaring fatalities natin, nakahanda po ba tayo, anong tulong ang pwede namin ibigay kung sakaling mangyari ito. So, meron tayong mga science-based information na makakatulong sa ating paghahanda. Okay? So, yon 502 estimated fatalities and 801, ito po sa baba, 801 buildings collapse for this particular scenario. Okay? So, at present, una lang earthquake na gawa namin. At present, Redis can compute for impacts due to severe wind, flood, tsunami, and crop damages. Okay? So, let's see some results. Ito po yung for severe wind. We can do this using a module ng Redis. As ang tawag namin, SWIFT. We're doing this together with Pag-asa. Severe wind impact forecasting tool. So, dito po, um, pwede tayo mag-simulate ng regional wind field map. And then, um, pwede mong i-cascade down to local wind hazard map. So, ang example ko po ay Cavite Province due to Typhoon Glenda. Pwede natin i-plot yung economic loss like so per barangay. The darker colors, again, will indicate mas severe yung damage. And then, pwede natin i-plot yung completely damaged for Cavite for Typhoon Glenda. Ganyan. 
And then, pwede rin natin i-disaggregate yung results uh, affected population in Cavite City in terms of uh, sa Typhoon Glenda, in terms of children, male, female, senior citizen, PWD, and per household. No? And then, pwede rin natin itabulate uh, pag daw Typhoon Glenda, ang severely damaged will be, ang top notcher will be Bacoor, followed by Das Marinas, and third is Tansa. No? So, pwede natin gawin yun. So, yung paghahanda natin, as I said, is science-based per hazard. Okay? And yan. So, ito po yung 21,000 completely damaged buildings led by Baco Ordas, Marinas, and Tansa. Okay. So, yun naman po sa flood, meron din kaming module, ang tawag naman namin, Redas Float, Flood Loss Assessment Tool together with MGB, ang partner natin. So, dito po, we estimate impacts from flood hazards. Ginagamit natin yung flood hazard map ng MGB. So, sa kanila, apat na classification, very high, high, moderate, and low. Uh, sa very high nila, ang sabi nila, greater than 2 meters ang flood daw for more than 3 days. So using this scenario, sinimulate natin sa Quezon City. So pwede natin makompute yung number of damaged buildings, the cost ng damaged buildings, and affected population in terms of children, disabled, female, and senior citizen. Bakit ba natin dinidesaggregate pa? Kasi po, itong mga pangangailangan nila sa mga evacuation centers iba-iba. So, iba-iba po yung kalilang pangangailangan. No? So, and then we can do the same for tsunami. Ang tawag naman po namin ay Red Tsunami uh, Impact Calculation Module. And then, yan po, ayan, pwede natin isimulate. So, tinuturoan natin ang LG to simulate this. Like so. And paano siya papasok sa loob ng mga uh, communities natin? Pati ilang oras, ganong kataas, pwede natin gawin. At kasama pong tinuturo yan sa training. No? So, ito pong sample ko ay Tiwi, Albay. Uh, yan. So, pag sa, nagkaroon doon ng magnitude 8.4 sa Tiwi, Albay, ito yung damage natin. Damage 0 to 3 at ilan yung affected population. No? So, yung 0, no damage, slight, moderate, and serious. Okay? So, and then, may mga LGUs na nag-request. Paano naman yung iba namin lugar, wala lang masyadong building. So, may dinevelop kaming tool, ang tawag namin crop dot. So, ang crop dot po ay nag-estimate ng agricultural damage due to severe wind and flood for rice and corn. So, may estimate natin yung yield losses using this module. Okay? So, ngayon po, who are the Redis users? Sino-sino po sila? So, ito ang ating mga LGUs, local government units, national government agencies, state universities and colleges, church groups, private companies, and NGOs. No? So, to date, we have trained 51 provinces. No? Ito po sila. Um, ito po yung mapa ng mga provinces na to. Meron pa kaming kailangan puntahan, abut, uh, bigyan ng training para lahat po ay makapacitate natin. As of now, ito po yung update natin. No? So, tingnan natin ang result. So, nagkaroon po ng earthquake noong August 18, magnitude 6.6 sa uh, mas bate. Ito po yung bulletin. Sinimulate namin using REDAS. Ito po yung epicenter. At kinumpir namin, ito po yung comparison. So sa Redas po, we are estimating 5 fatalities and 25 na non-life threatening. Kung titignan natin ang CITREP report na NDREMC, 1 dead and 51 injured. So para lang maka-idea tayo how near or how far yung ating estimate. No? So nagkakaroon din tayo ng improvement sa ating mga equations para mas, mas malapit. Pero ngayon po, uh, more or less, halos nagkakapareho naman ang ating estimate. And take note po, ang ating exposure database na ginagamit, ginagamit is NSO, PSA, and it's a nighttime scenario. So nagdidepende rin kung anong oras nangyari yung event. Siyempre, minsan wala na sila sa bahay, nakalabas na. So maaaring magkaiba yung bilang ng ating estimate. Okay? So, and then we can plot the results na ganito per town. Pwede natin makuha. So, so yung five na yon ang top nature is Kataingan, followed by Palanas and Pure Corpus. So, ito po yung ginawa namin adjustment ng pre-COVID. Ang training namin ay six days, 56 hours, 60 participants stay in kami. Uh, nagtuturo uh, for 8 or to 10 hours. Nung post-COVID, ginawa namin online yung course. No? Nine online, rather, courses. Uh, MOA pa rin required, pero mas kakaunti na, 15 na lang to 20 participants kasi nga, depende sa internet. No? So, yan. And then, yung the whole six days, dinibide na namin sa nine courses. So, modules 1 to 3, ladderized courses. No? Kailangan ma-undergo mo yung 1 to 3 
modules bago ka makaproceed sa Fort Denine. So, ganun po yung ginawa namin. So, sa ngayon, since uh, August, actually July, nag-start na kami, ang na-train na namin using online is uh, was si Bugay. Sa Mwanga, si Bugay, modules 1 and 2 na undergo nila. OCD, regions 4, 8, and 7, and Makati City, ongoing yan. And until December, Ang mga target namin, nakaschedule na is Iligan City, Danau del Norte, and Office of Civil Defense for Module 2. Okay? So, bakit ba natin kailangan gawin? Ba't hindi na lang namin ibigay yung results sa inyo? Ba't hindi na lang ganun? Kasi we'd like to teach communities to learn by doing. Dapat po, science-based ang ating disaster preparedness. Uh, we'd like to foster self-help and self-reliance. And communities should understand, accept, and therefore own the impact results. Okay, yun po yung ating advocacy. So our goal in using REDAS is to use REDAS in emergency preparedness, contingency planning, and mainstreaming disaster risk reduction in the development planning for safe and prepared Philippine communities. I think that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Salamat po. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Leo. Uh, for a very, very uh, comprehensive discussion about REDAS. I'm sure many are interested and would like to know more about REDAS. Um, do we have questions now or would like to... Uh, pwede po niyong i-post yung questions nyo dito sa chat box so that uh, later on we can ask uh, si Doc Leo and later on si Mabi na rin. So far, wala pa pong nakapost. So maybe we can uh, proceed muna. So yung next... Uh, uh, speaker po natin. Mapapansin niyo po, madami na pong province, no, dun sa Redas na nag-avail, pero there are still like a lot of other provinces and I think it's it's worthwhile kasi maganda po siyang tool that uh, the LGUs can use for their planning as what uh, Doc Leo said. And um, after ni Doc Leo na discussion on Redas, I think mapapansin niyo uh, she mentioned hazard hunter and geo risk. And so this two, kung ako yung tatanungin nyo, parang uh, sila Doc Leo and si Doc Bart, they did the first uh, really uh, good um, development ng Redas. And then may younger generation naman po tayo that are also doing yung additional to complement yung mga uh, na-achieve na ng Redas. And then we have this other uh, geo risk project 